Well, we'll go ahead and dive into it. We're uh, here this morning and it's April 7th, 2022. Uh, we are so honored to be with Dr. John Lombardi. He served as president uh, of the University of Florida. He was the ninth president of the University of Florida. He played an integral role in the beginnings and the foundations and the success of UF's OCAMIC retirement community. We've been uh, Dr. Lombardi, as I mentioned at the outset, we've had the opportunity to interview a, about uh, between 25 and 30 current residents of Okamic, and they have given us a wonderful overview of what it's like to live there, what it's meant to them at this stage of their lives, and kind of the, some of the connections between Okamic um, and the rest of the University of Florida. So this morning, if it's okay with you, we wanted to kind of go back in time and talk about the early, you know, concept of Okamic, you know, kind of what was going through your, your thought process in establishing this really unique uh, university uh, community. So could we kind of start there um, with, with kind of, you know, where did this idea come from? Well, I, I, I think... Um... I think the notion of a continuous care retirement community uh, was a pretty common sort of idea uh, in the 90s. Uh, people thought it was uh, something interesting, but there weren't uh, a whole lot of good examples. There were a lot of not so good examples, but not a lot of good examples. And uh, so Paul Robel and I were wandering around the universe soliciting money, uh, which we spent a great deal of time doing. And we uh, ran into uh, Frank Duckworth, in Washington, D.C., if I remember right. And uh, Frank was a previous donor to the university, and uh, we were visiting him again to see if he'd be interested in, uh, in uh, doing it again. And uh, in the course of our conversation, he ended up expressing some interest in this project and found a way to, to uh, uh, provide some initial funding for a feasibility study. And so I think that's the origin of this, at least so far as I remember. And, you know, I'm getting old, and so my memory is fading. But uh, that, that was my uh, sense of, of, uh, of the activity. And so from there, uh, we put together a team at the, at the foundation uh, to look into the possibility of creating a CCRC for the University of Florida. And uh, I, I think uh, there were a certain sort of fundamental notions that underlay this whole process. And the first was, of course, uh, that such a community couldn't be owned by the university, that it needed to be in, an independent entity uh, with its own governance and its own organizational structure and its own finances. Uh, this is not unusual at the university for uh, initiatives of this kind. This is the same sort of general plan that, that we used for the hotel way back uh, in the dark ages when the hotel was invented. And the purpose of that is to say that there are people a whole lot smarter than us who know how to run these kind of enterprises and that we should let the smart people run the enterprises and the university should celebrate their success. And so that was the, the principal uh, uh, organizational uh, notion. And then put together a committee of, uh, of uh, prominent people in the university to uh, look at who might participate and to uh, uh, and start talking about how to put, to put together such a community. And uh, there were many ideas that were floated at that time, uh, both about the scale of it, about the, the basic uh, cost of the activities, about who uh, ought to be the primary clientele. And after quite a bit of discussion, I think the uh, answer came that, that we, we wanted to make a high quality uh, operation uh, that uh, that would not be exorbitant in price, but might well be substantial. Uh, that would require a real commitment on the part of the participants, uh, and that would satisfy the requirements of the state of Florida for creating what would be primarily an insurance product. And what that meant was that the uh, that the CCRC had to be completely self-sustaining and that the finance has had to be validated by an outside agency, somebody who knew what they were talking about uh, and looking at those kinds of, uh, 
the notions. And so that that's the sort of core of the of the activity. And uh, once once these uh, sort of initial notions were reasonably well established, uh, the foundation found uh, a couple of people to lead this conversation. And Leslie Bram and, uh, and Bruce Delaney, uh, who took the, the leadership of that uh, organizational effort at the early stages and uh, and took it took it forward with a steering committee of former deans and uh, people like Paula Kreiser with uh, real standing in the community and uh, E.T. York and others. And uh, the question was always, uh, how do you do this as a first class enterprise to match the quality of the other? Uh, activities uh, at the University of Florida. Uh, the goal is to uh, have a CCRC that would uh, lend um, uh, stature and style and uh, effectiveness to the university itself. And so while the university wouldn't own it, the uh, CCRC would be tightly bound to a wide range of university facilities, whether they be athletic uh, or educational, uh, whether they be artistic, what, what, whatever they would be, uh, the foundation, uh, the uh, CCRC would have good linkages into all of these organizations, and that it was possible to call it uh, uh, Oak Hammock at the University of Florida, so that the name that was associated with the uh, CCRC uh, would carry the same kind of cachet uh, as the university itself. And so from that point of view, uh, I had the good fortune to disappear, and, uh, and a whole lot smarter people uh, took over the operation, organization, and structure of the of the uh, of the CCRC, and as you can tell from your current uh, conversations, uh, these ideas, early ideas, turned out to be exactly what uh, uh, the CCR turned out to be: a high quality, continuous care retirement community with uh, multiple levels of care to respond to different life periods and the cycle of the residents. Uh, high uh, participation by people with associations with the University of Florida, close linkages to the key uh, schools of the institution, whether it was the medical school or the vet school or the, uh, the fine arts center or the Har museum. And so at the end of the day, I think uh, the people who uh, carried this idea to fruition and who have made it work in subsequent years have demonstrated what a first class operation of this kind ought to be. And so while I didn't have anything to do with it, it uh, I take little credit for what turned out to be a successful enterprise. It's, uh, it's charming uh, in return to see what uh, uh, my colleagues and friends were able to create. Dr. Lombardi, in, those, in the early um, concept of Okamic, who did you imagine would end up living there? You mentioned you know, wanting a commitment um, for, for people who would move there, but who, who did you who do you kind of imagine you know living there at, at, at the beginning of, of the the um, the project? Yeah, well, I I think like all of these uh, CCRCs that are affiliated with the universities, the assumption is that uh, the core constituency for the CCRC would be uh, people with an affiliation to the University of Florida. Either they'd be retired faculty and staff, and they would be people who. Uh, uh, who moved back to Gainesville uh, to be associated with a family that's in Gainesville that was associated with the university. And because the, the activities of the CCRC were often tightly coupled with university activities, whether they're sports or cultural or academic, it's not surprising that uh, the membership of, of the CCRC would end up being a reasonably well uh, focused on people with University of Florida connections of one kind or another. What were some of the, the you, you alluded to uh, some of the, the challenges. Could you maybe talk a little more about, you know, uh, challenges to, to getting the project started? Um, was there any, any, any pushback that you experienced? People have said, you may have said, you know, this is just too audacious at this point. Well, of course, there never is a project that people don't object to. So. You know, there's always somebody who says it's not a good idea. It doesn't matter what the project is. It doesn't matter who supports it. it. doesn't matter why it's there. There's always people who say it's a lousy idea. Uh, and so we didn't pay much attention to that. Uh, but uh, but I, I think the real question uh, that uh, confronted the steering committee was to try to set price points. 
uh, because uh, the constituency uh, had uh, quite a range of uh, financial capability. And uh, th there hadn't been a lot of consideration of what kind of uh, a financial base uh, many of, of the likely participants would have. So you, you have faculty who have lived there for 30 years in Gainesville and they say, oh, I don't have much money. But the fact is that when you look at their total assets, the increased value of their property and houses, it turned out that most of them were in range of participating in a reasonably financed uh, facility. At the end of the day, the key to operating a CCRC is to have enough money. And so while you can you know, preach the gospel about one thing and another, at the end of the day, if you don't have enough money, these things fail. And so, so you have... So you have to set them up on a financial basis that will uh, carry the costs and will maintain the quality. Uh, because if you don't do that, at the end of the day, you have low quality and you have a low operating and, and it's not a success. And so uh, the wisdom of the people who finally developed uh, the plan and, uh, and the consultants, the good ones they finally got, uh, came to a conclusion as to where the price point should be. Uh, both for the independent houses, uh, for the, the people living in the uh, in the residence facility, and the people in the, in the continuing care environment, what what those needed to be, and uh, in doing that, there's a lot of information out there, and I think the experts didn't have any trouble figuring out uh, what it ought to be. But I'm sure it was controversial because it dealt with money, and anything dealing with money is controversial. But uh, in the end, I think um, uh, Oak Hammock. Uh, found a, a good spot, a sweet spot in the environment uh, that was attractive to people of means, but accessible to people of modest means. And I think that was sort of the key to its success. Yep, yep, yep. You're mute, yep. sir. There you go. You think after two years, I would get the hang of this thing. But... <laughs> You know, one of the things that in our interviews has really been highlighted by the residents, and they're just so thrilled and excited about the Institute of Learning and Retirement, and um, they it, it's just a great thing. And some of the residents even say, you know, look, that's why I moved to Oak Hammock, you know, because of this really active ILR. Did you, can you talk about that um, uh, and, and how that how that developed from your, your understanding, the Institute of Learning and Retirement? Well, I, I think our assumption was that if you scale this operation correctly, it would attract people for whom the university was an asset. And so if you attract people for whom the university is an asset, the asset they're interested in is learning. That is, they're interested in uh, new developments in various fields, whether they're medicine or <laughs> science or humanities or whatever they are. And so the result is that the attractiveness of the CRC, CCRC is a function of this connection to the university's primary purpose, which is education, learning, and, and, the, and, and the varieties that go with it. So what you get is you get a self-selected group of people who want to participate in learning, who want to see what's going on in the world, who want to understand uh, new initiatives in areas of science and uh, and. Uh, on the humanities and the social sciences and uh, professions, they, they want to know what's going on and they want to be not only observers, but in some way participants in that process of learning and, and teaching. So uh, the learning in retirement uh, is one mechanism, but there's lots of other mechanisms. So uh, when people at the CCRC uh, participate in uh, an activity at the Harn, they're participating in the cultural life of the university. Or when they go to the Performing Arts Center, the same thing takes place. And so from our point of view, we believe that this affiliation with the university, if you could construct it closely and effectively and, and uh, efficiently, uh, would be a major drawing point uh, for participants uh, in the CCRC. Dr. Lombardi, you, met, you use this phrase, which I, I really like, the, the cultural life of the university. Can you talk about how Oak Hammock contributes to the cultural life of the university? I mean, not just people from Oak Hammock going to the Horn, but like, like what impact does Oak Hammock have on the University of Florida um, overall? 
Well, I think I think the I think Okamic is a is one more asset in the university's a collection of outstanding assets, and so as a result, when people look at the university, they see everything that goes from uh, football to the CCRC, and and uh, this whole range of activities uh, is what gives the university its vital energy. And, and there's no way you can say, well, they contribute X or they contribute Y, whichever entity you're looking at. It's that when you look at the university and you say what's missing, there aren't very many things missing. And one of the things that was missing but was filled by the CCRC was a good retirement community that carried the mission of the university from the active faculty and active staff all the way through their retirement years. Mm -hmm. Have you had the chance, um, I'm, I'm sure you have, but you know, to kind of now kind of stepping back, have you had the chance to compare OCAMIC, this CCRC here in, at, at UF and Gainesville with some other CCRCs to think about like what makes OCAMIC unique, you know, what, what makes it similar? Um, like how in your mind, how does OCAMIC compare to some of the other you know, representative CCRCs? Well, uh, uh, there's many varieties of retirement communities out there that are affiliated with colleges and universities. And some of them are independent entities in which linkages are carried out to different colleges or universities in the environment. I think the thing that is uh, uh, particularly significant about uh, Oak Hammock is that it is so UF centric. Uh, that is, it is, it is uh, truly a a university asset, and well, you can go underneath it and see the structural linkages that separate the uh, CCRC from the institution as a financial entity and, and, and as a governance entity. At the same time, the people who are there see themselves as part of the university's community in the same way they did before they came. And so the continuation of people from both the university and the community into the CRCC is a continuation of their life. It's not a question of, well, I'm gonna leave the community and join the CCRC. It's just simply another place to live in a more enhanced environment in another stage in their life. So I think that's uh, always been one of the key, uh, one of the key attractions of, of, uh, of the Oak Hammock enterprise. And there, I'm, there, I've been involved with others and they're very good too. Uh, they're highly organized. They have linkages to colleges and universities, but but they don't have the same sense of ownership uh, that the people in Oak Hammond have to the university, and 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 that uh, I think is a real asset. Dr. Lombardi, you've taken us through some of the early challenges of creating Oak Hammond and the C CCRC, and. At, in the beginning, I mean, now it's so successful, it, 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 it's kind of hard to remember at one point, it was just an idea, then it became a building project. And then you mentioned price points and really having to, to sell people on the idea. Um, when did you first realize that, that this was gonna work, that this wasn't just an idea, but actually was going to, to work? And what were some of the early, early successes you remember connected to Okamic? Well, you know, I, I think once you run a, a feasibility study and you discover that the finances can carry the enterprise, <clears throat> the rest of it is detail. It doesn't mean the detail isn't controversial. It doesn't mean that it isn't complicated and difficult, uh, but, but the, the core operation is the part you don't see, right? I mean, uh, uh, people focus on things that you see, like you know, how are we connected to the medical school and how are we connected to the vet school and what's going to be done about my pets. And, you know, all of those kind of conversations are really hot buttons for participants, uh, but, but they're not the, the core determinant of whether or not it succeeds or fails. These things succeed or fail based on the financial structure that is set in place underneath them. And whether that financial structure will carry the cost of what everybody wants to do. And so I, I think the, the initial uh, success uh, of the CRC is the result of, of careful management by those who invented it. And, and they carefully uh, tried to calibrate all of the costs and the benefits and tried to, to balance that all out. Uh, you know, those things are never done. 
uh, be because the arrangements are expensive, they're complicated, uh, how much you want to involve the medical school, how much you don't want to involve the medical school, how much you want to involve the, the vet school, how, how much you want to engage the, the core activities of the university. Do you want to allow the political controversies of the university to invade uh, the CCRC? All, all of those issues are, are, are sort of management issues and if managed properly, uh, uh, they will work out fine and, and improperly they won't. But underneath it all, if the money isn't there, the thing won't prosper. And uh, nobody wants to talk about money, uh, but I always talk about money because nobody else will. And, and I think that if you don't have the money, uh, you won't have a good CCRC. And so um, I always was uh, strong for uh, a conversation about how you're going to pay for the things you want. It's not hard to think what you want. Uh, but it is hard to figure out how you can pay for the things you want. And so uh, that was, I think, the principal issues. Now, the good news for me is that I left the scene uh, when it got hard. I, when it got hard making decisions about this, that, and the other thing, I said bye. <laughs> and other people took the, took the uh, operation and made it a success. And they should get credit because that's hard to do. And, and, and um I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take some small credit for insisting on having a good financial base, but otherwise, I think what the what the thing became is really what the uh, original people had in mind when they started thinking about a CCRC. I mean, not in detail, but in substance, that it would be a place that was affiliated with the university, that it would reflect the university's values and systems and and resources that it would connect people back to the university who had left the university for a large portion of the population and bring people in who would want to be connected uh, to what the university was and what it could provide. And I think in the end, the details uh, 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 pretty much fulfill the dream that, that many people had at the beginning of the process. Many at the beginning of the process, everybody wanted the kind of place that it has become. And it didn't become that way by accident. A tremendous amount of work, uh, participants and others was required. But at the end of the day, if you skip over that intermediate part, you see an enterprise that is doing just about exactly uh, what everybody hoped would happen when this was first started. Dr. Lombardi, you mentioned the people who, <clears throat> who should take credit. Um, can you, Think of, of of some of those some of those folks um, that that really should you know if if we if we had a credits like if this was a Hollywood movie and you know, these are some of the key people that that put it together who would be on that list? Well, I, I, I've told you the first two, of course, uh, Bruce Delaney and, and uh, Leslie Bram, and then uh, this character sitting up here, Paul Robelt, is, is a is a key actor in this conversation. Now, without Paul, none of this would have happened. And, and so uh, I, I think if you want to put him at the list of the uh, at the top of the list of contributors. Otherwise, I'm not going to list names too many. I'd forget them all. And the one I'd forget would be the most important and we'd be in trouble. So I, I, I ain't listing names. OK, that, fair enough. Have you had a chance, Dr. Lombardi, to, to talk to you know current or past residents of Oak Hammock like, um, and, and just get a chance to like you know, shoot the breeze with them and see how, how things are going. And, uh, uh, and and if so, what kind of conversations stick out in your mind with well, some of the residents? You know, I visited uh, two or three times in the last hundred years or whatever it is and uh, uh, met various residents. And uh, they're, they're all the same people I would have expected to be in there. And they were all saying the same things I would have expected them to say. They all have the same complaints I would have expected them to have. Uh, so so I, I don't think there's any great mystery here. I think you have a well-run, outstanding facility that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do and, and, uh, and, and is living through the times that it has to live through. And, you know, these things will never be perfect. There's always issues on the side, not enough money, not enough activity, things aren't fast enough, things are too slow, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but in the end of the day, as long as you have people signing up who are of, of the level and quality of people you want to have at the institution, uh, then you're in pretty good shape. And that seems to me to have been uh, what's happened with Oak Island. How, if you, if someone approached you today, a university president or a, 
board of trustees from, from a college and said, you know, Dr. Lombardi, our, our university is thinking about starting a CCRC. Um, what would be your, your response and, and, and guidance? Well, I, I don't think there's any mystery there. I'd send them to Okamic and I'd say, first of all, look at the money. And second of all, look at the facilities and the structure. And what is it that's attracting people and why are they coming and who's coming? And once you've figured all that out, then see whether that matches the environment that you're in. Excellent. Why, um, Donovan or Adolfo, do you have questions for Dr. Lombardi? Um, I do have one question, actually. Uh, I've been interviewing a couple of folks uh, from the community, but one of the questions that I have, we talked a little bit about the educational uh, component of Oak Hammock, but one of the things I want to hear is the component of the healthcare aspect, uh, wh whether it comes to nursing or rehab. Uh, how did how did that relationship uh, got started with the with the medical side of things at UF and the relationship building to Oak Hammock? What was uh, how did that got started and how did you go about like the finances on that on that area on the healthcare aspect? Yeah, well, the healthcare is always complicated because people assume that if there is a big medical school and a big hospital, that mm -hmm. those enterprises will want to charge right in and and and, and operate uh, in a, within Oak Hammock, but that's not actually how it occurs. Uh, basically, those operations uh, provide advice and counsel as you establish your own uh, healthcare relationships, and so yes, the hospital is there to uh, take patients. Uh, so when you have somebody at Oak Hammock who needs to be hospitalized, why well, you send them to the hospital? Uh, and if you have somebody who needs specialized medical care, you send them out to the specialized docs associated with the medical school. But the operation of the healthcare activity inside uh, Oak Hammock is something that Oak Hammock needs to take charge of with advice and counsel and help uh, from colleagues in, in the medical school. But, but uh, the medical school in general rarely is successful in operating in-house um, activities, whether it's student health centers or whether it's operation at, uh, at, uh, at the CCRC. Those need to be uh, calibrated for the constituency of the CCRC or the, or the student health center, which is not the same constituency as the regular uh, health uh, activities of the hospital or the, or the physician care. So it's important to keep those uh, in a way separate but but connected so that the advice the counsel the wisdom that is available at the health center is accessible uh, by the ccrc but that those folks are not responsible for what takes place inside the ccrc donovan do you have uh, any follow-up questions um yes so Kind of in that vein, um, when I've talked to residents at Okemic, they really appreciate not only the, the, the kind of quality of care that they get at, um, at Okemic in terms of like skilled nursing and um, like memory recovery centers, but also um, like the staff and uh, what's what else? The, ability to be involved in university kind of events and activities. Um, so and it's, so for instance, um, like football games, basketball games, baseball games, sporting <laughs> events. Uh, and the, I hear that from pretty much, most people I've interviewed, most residents I've interviewed have mentioned their, not only their love for the ILR program, but also these types of kind of in events where they can engage not only with the student population, but specifically sporting events specifically. It seems like that was intentional, like an almost intentional uh, relationship building. Can you, do you, do you have anything to say about that? Can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I think, um, I think that all goes back to the management of the CCRC. And if the management of the CCRC is wise, well, they'll create as many linkages as possible between the CCRC and the resources of the university. Now, because the resources of a university of the size and complexity of, of, of the University of Florida 
are so vast and so large and so complex that they can capture any interest uh, that any uh, group within the CCRC would have. And so wise management will try to figure out how to make those connections take place in a way that is graceful and easy, uh, but nonetheless substantive. And uh, when you look at other uh, retirement communities, uh, for example, you, you find that they almost all have uh, learning and retirement kinds of activities uh, that try and connect the, the uh, residents of the CCRC to some topic of, of uh, significance, uh, uh, either related to the university or to the world at large. But it's hard for them to get the kind of scale of, of expertise and, and, uh, and, and topical interest uh, that you can get when you're affiliated tightly coupled with a university of the size and the scale and the, and the variety of the University of Florida. So that's been one of the great advantages. One of the other great advantages, obviously, is the ability for people who, who while they're no longer engaged in the academic um, uh, give and take of the university, nonetheless want to participate in the life of the university. And the life of the university includes a very wide range of activities. It in includes all the things that take place at a performing arts center. It includes all the things that take place in drama, it takes all the things that take place with fine arts shows, uh, all the things, of course, you mentioned football. Well, of course, football is the center of everybody's universe, but uh, really not. It's only the center of a certain subset universe. It's very loud, uh, but it isn't the center of everybody's universe. And so the other sports are of great interest, the enthusiasm for baseball, the enthusiasm you know, for, for tennis, all of those enthusiasm don't go away when somebody retires. They don't go away when somebody leaves the university, right? And so one of the advantages of coming back uh, to a place like uh, Oak Hammock is that there's already a system in place to reconnect you uh, to those operations. You don't have to go out and find a way to, to, to get involved with tennis. You, you'll go to somebody in the CCRC and say, how would I go to a tennis match? And they say, well, we've got a car that goes over there twice a week or whatever, and you can participate. And so then you sign up and, and you participate. And, and it's that, that um, the fluidity of, of that uh, behavior uh, mm -hmm. that lends great strength to CCRC. And because it's a CCRC and not owned by the university, uh, you can engage at any level of intensity that is appropriate for you at any particular time. So when you first go in and you're full of them and vigor, right, and you want to participate in everything and you want to take a bus everywhere and you want to, you know, do whole kinds of things, you can do that. But 15 years later, where you don't have as much energy and you really don't want to do all that stuff anymore, right, you can scale it back to the things that are really important or they're interested in. Excellent. Paul, what, what questions have we not asked that we should, that, that we actually should ask this morning? <laughs> uh, I think you've covered it pretty well. I, I think uh, what John says, he, the financing was the key to, to make it work. Without the money, it wouldn't work. Right. And obviously one of the uh, conundrums is you want to build the facility, but you, you don't have enough people who have signed up and put up their money to pay for the facility. So you have to borrow money on the expectation that more people will come. And, and that was done. There was a man, uh, Jerry Davis, who was a large donor to the University of Florida who guaranteed one of the loans that made it possible to build Oak Hammock. Uh, Oak Hammock is, of course, I live here, but it's uh, what John says is true. You know, you, you you can select the degree of activity and involvement that you want, and some people are pretty well isolated. They stay in their apartments and they never leave. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but it's not that far off. There are other people who are uh, involved daily with committees or activities, one sort or another, and it, it just varies. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention is um, 
the the feasibility study thought that uh, retired faculty and staff would would be a, um, good prospects to, to live here. But also, um, I, I know several people here who had nothing to do with the University of Florida, had never been to Gainesville before, who uh, checked out. Uh, one couple have visited 50 different CCRCs and thought Okamic was the best, so they chose to, to move here. And uh, that and that's a good mixture to have both university people and uh, uh, alumni or non-alumni uh, who didn't have much to do with the university living here. Well, excellent. So. Paul and Dr. Lombardi, we've taken up a lot of your time this morning. We're just so very appreciative uh, to be able to just continue this discussion about the origins and creation and, and really thriving of the, this remarkable retirement community. Are any, you know, any final thoughts, Dr. Lombardi, as, as we, we start to wrap up? Um, any other things you want to talk about? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I, I think uh, with Paul, you have a real history with the place, uh, which is important. And uh, uh, my participation, of course, was very early in the, in the invention of it. And for me, the, uh, uh, the reward is simply to see how well my friends and colleagues have carried out what we had uh, hoped for at the very beginning. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite quite impressive what they've achieved and, and uh, I don't see any reason it shouldn't continue. Excellent. Well, uh, Dr. Lombardi, in, in wrapping up, we're going to have um, probably in early, like very late April, early May, kind of a, a reunion of, of the narrators of people who've been interviewed uh, for this, uh, this research project to kind of get together and our graduate students are going to uh, give uh, some presentations about what they've learned. And then we're all gonna kind of, um, kind of put our, our thinking caps together and figure out where we wanna go from here. And there's been some talk about maybe doing a podcast for WUFT, um, you know, trying to you know, spread the word and you know, really represent a, a OCAMIC and because a lot of, you know, as, as, as you probably are aware, we're as faculty are encouraged to participate in the life of the, the community. And I'm giving a couple of lectures this summer. Um, I'm going out and talking about one of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, and, and I do, uh, so the, the ILR kind of looks to me to give talks about authors and books and, and whatnot. But um, we will we'll let you know we're gonna, so in other words, we're gonna schedule kind of a, a, a remote Zoom kind of get together and kind of where do we go from here kind of, kind of community event. But again, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your very busy schedule. Um, if there's anything you wanna add in the future, you know, any, any future thoughts about OCAMIC, you know, of course you can always contact us and we're, we're always ready to, to talk with you. And, and again, uh, sir, it's just been, a, it's a great honor for the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program uh, to be able to, to kind of connect with you and, and thank you so much. Well, it was my pleasure to be involved with anything that came from Sam Proctor. So, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank good you. Luck thank you, guys. Thank you, Paul, for making all this, this, this possible. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.